Recent polling data has shown that just about 39 percent of Californians are in favor of Prop 1A and about 15 percent are undecided. That 15 percent could decide whether the state follows through on the largest tax hike in California history. Now this fork started off as a joke. The organizers of this event played on a friend who had always driven by this fork in the road and said, you know what, there should be a fork there. We should have a fork there. So for his birthday, they gave him a fork. Dogs like Cheeseburger here are just trying to get a chance to hop on board. People from all over the area came here to show their support, with many just participating because they were driving by. One thing they all have in common is that good teachers are being let go, and that's something they won't stand for. I'm here outside the house where friends and family have mourned the loss of the young man all day, and the parents are inside absolutely heartbroken, as you can imagine. Police have not officially declared a cause of death, but say the rain over the weekend could have flooded the creek bed where he was walking his dog and sucked him into it. In Fullerton, I'm Matt Johnson for KTLA News. If taxes increase, so will the outrage. That is the general consensus at this anti-tax tea party at the Van Nuys Civic Center. They brought signs, flags, and loved ones to rally against the federal and state government. Demonstrations like this one took place all over the country, showing that President Obama isn't popular with everyone. Passionate guest speakers prayed for the return of their values. And please let us have capitalism and freedom back and a free enterprise. People took turns denouncing mostly President Obama and government spending and sent it home by dropping tea bags into a trash bin, similar to the historic Boston Tea Party. Political science professor Tom Hoganesh says, however, Tea Party goers across the country may be misinformed. 95% of Americans' taxes are actually going to be going down. So, um, yeah, plus there's a pretty serious economic crisis. I think a lot of people understand that in, a, in an economic crisis of this magnitude, there's going to be deficit spending. California legislators have so far not been able to avoid raising taxes and will look to raise even more. Proposition 1A is part of a special election next month and would increase state tax revenue by $16 billion. David Wolf and the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association is leading the fight against Prop 1A, saying that it's the wrong time for new taxes. And we just believe when we're already the highest tax state in the country. Um, and given that within this budget that was just passed, there were only legitimately $5 billion worth of actual cuts. We just believe it's it's unfair in the middle of the worst recession since the Great Depression to continue to increase taxes on individuals without any real semblance of structural reform in government. Recent polling data has shown that just about 39 percent of Californians are in favor of Prop 1A and about 15 percent are undecided. That 15 percent could decide whether the state follows through on the largest tax hike in California history. In Sacramento, I'm Matt Johnson for Valley View News. Bulldogs from all over Southern California are hitting the slope, auditioning for a chance to get on a Rose Parade float. Tillman, the world's fastest skateboarding dog, and two other pros, Rose and Lyle, are already slated to glide down the float in January. Dozens of amateur Bulldogs lined up, hoping to share the stage with their idols. Joey Herrick is the president of Natural Balance and says people just can't get enough of these pooches. And this is just a great, uh, fun project for us to do uh, that has a lot of interest. Herrick says the 112-foot float will be the longest in the world when it debuts during the Rose Parade. Megan Van Tyle and her mother Jill brought Cheeseburger to the audition and couldn't wait to show off their dog's new trick. Last night we actually took him to the park and put him on a hill and just pulled him down the hill. So it was literally about three days that he learned to do this skateboard trick. But he's always liked skateboards and surfboards and soccer balls and frisbees. He gets real obsessive with his toys. Now there's only two spots available to get on the float with Tillman, Rose, and Lyle. But dogs like Cheeseburger here are just trying to get a chance to hop on board. In Pacoima, I'm Matt Johnson for Valley View News. Support our schools! Talk if you can! These teachers, students, and concerned citizens feel their schools are under attack, and they're making their voices heard. They took to the streets of Simi Valley in their pink shirts and participated in Pink Friday, a statewide protest against education cuts. But the people with the signs weren't making all the noise. Motorists driving by got in on the action by honking their car horns in support. 
Demonstrators were urged to wear pink as a symbol of the 26,000 pink slips handed out to California school workers and teachers. Teachers like Don Moffitt, who says she may have to look out of state to find a new job. I, I really don't want to leave the state, but there are some opportunities in other places. We've lived in Simi Valley for 20 years, and you know, to leave would be, would be sad. Margaret Acosta Amato is a teacher and a mom who says it's the children who ultimately pay the price. Each pink slip represents a minimum of 20 teachers or 20 students shoved into somebody else's classroom. Classrooms across the state are expected to increase dramatically as a result of the layoffs. Some classrooms may actually double in size to seat about 45 students. Christopher Burt is a junior at Santa Susana High School who has already seen some of his favorite teachers get pink slips. But there's a lot of chaos when a teacher doesn't take, you know, control of their class, you know. But when the class are going to have 40 kids in them, you know, 45, it's going to be complete chaos. People from all over the area came here to show their support, with many just participating because they were driving by. One thing they all have in common is that good teachers are being let go, and that's something they won't stand for. In Simi Valley, I'm Matt Johnson for Valley View News. Between Pasadena and St. John Avenue, there is a fork in the road, literally. The now famous Pasadena Fork has attracted people from all over the area to get a glimpse of the 18-foot utensil. And now the people behind it are putting together a food drive for the homeless this Thanksgiving. Philip Coombs says it's all for a good cause. And then we were just sitting down uh, a couple weeks ago having a glass of wine, thinking what, what can we do to put a positive spin on it. And we came up with the idea of put a fork in hunger. And it just kind of took off from there. They'll be donating the two tons of food they received for a huge Thanksgiving Day dinner for more than 6,000 homeless individuals. The people who've participated are excited to have pitched in. And we just went out and bought some food and brought it up to the food drive. Okay. Which I think is a very, they both go together. Now this fork started off as a joke. The organizers of this event played on a friend who had always driven by this fork in the road and said, you know what, there should be a fork there. We should have a fork there. So for his birthday, they gave him a fork. When the architect, Ken Marshall, and his buddies were putting up the fork for their friend Bob Stain, they dressed in Caltrans uniforms, figuring that would keep police off their backs. I did not realize whether Pasadena was going to put me in jail, find me, or whatever it was they were going to do. The city of Pasadena has been supportive so far, but questions linger about how long the fork will be allowed to stay up. In the meantime, they've been so successful here, they hope to be back at the same spot in Christmas for a toy drive. In Pasadena, I'm Matt Johnson for Valley View News. It's interesting you bring up the September 12th rally. The man credited with kind of organizing that and putting the fire in a lot of that passion is Glenn Beck who didn't necessarily help the situation when he said that President Obama is a racist with a deep-seated hatred for white people. Um, do you think that helps this at all, distance away from? Well, of course it doesn't help. Okay, do you agree with but, that? But a, Glenn Beck had no major role in organizing tea parties. Listen, I'm a political conservative. I can tell you he was involved in the tea parties, and it certainly isn't Glenn Beck. I'm not a big fan of Glenn Beck. Former U.S. President Jimmy Carter has said that the opposition toward President Obama has been racist. Do you agree with that statement? Uh, I think that you would probably have rejection and or opposition from uh, the Republican Party if the candidate was blue. Uh, it's an ideological objection. My name is Matt Johnson.